How often in a single trip do you check your propane because you are deathly afraid of running out of gas to make your meals? I've got a great renewable option for you that is gonna blow your mind. The All Powers R1500 combined with the Stoke Voltaics Nomad Cook System. It's gonna be a complete game changer in how you make your meals. Also, stay tuned to the end of this video and I will tell you how you can win this chair for free. Not this chair, this is my chair. A chair just like this and I have two to give away. Stay tuned. Behind me here is my brand new Super Ute that is just awesome. Build video coming very soon. Now what I want to do different with this build over my other builds is rely more on electric and less on gas. For instance, fire pits I run off of propane and I typically am very conservative with how much I use because I don't want to run out and not be able to make dinner and coffee. However, I'm trying to get away from that mindset and rely solely on electric, which is completely renewable because of solar panels. And then I can go full bore with the gas at night for fire pits. This here is that system. This is the All Powers R1500, which I've done a couple tests with and it's just an absolute workhorse. Combined with the new Stoke Voltaics uh, Nomad Cook System, as well as the little jewel here, which are all electric. It's an electric pot electric pan and an electric water heater which is basically a small jet boil with the heating element inside which is just really convenient and very easy to use and here we have the brand new all powers r1500 i'm not going to get into a ton of specs but let's see some of the ones that kind of stand out it has a 1152 watt hour capacity 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 3000 watt peak maximum of 1500 watt ac input zero to 80 percent within 45 minutes there's four ways to charge ac solar auto and double ac and solar long life lithium battery with over 3500 charge cycles the DC cigarette lighter is a 10 amp output at 120 watt max. I know you're gonna ask, Kelly, don't you already have another larger battery bank? And I'm gonna say, yes, I have the Anchor C1000. However, really disappointed with that one. It just never held up to this test of time. The DC power outlet won't even run my geyser shower. I was at Overland Expo PNW. I went to take a shower and it did not run the geyser, which was really surprising because it's just a really small pump. It's nothing crazy. The water was preheated. I didn't even use the heating element. It was just the pump of the geyser. It would not run it. So now it won't run the geyser and it won't run any diesel heater I've ever plugged into it. So Anchor is out and this one has been foolproof. It has run everything I've plugged into it so far, which is great. It even ran the uh, Boog RV fridge during the torture test. And I ran this thing completely dry overnight. I'm trying to get a whole case of water that was at 82 degrees up down to 30 degrees while it's sitting out in the direct sun all the way until 1030 at night. And it got to like 99 degrees that day. So definitely is tried and true in the DC outlet system. It has definitely been well tested, but now we're going to test it just a little bit more. Real world dimensions are 16 inches wide, 12 and a quarter inches tall and 10 and a half inches deep. For storage, this is a big rectangle, which is really easy to fit into any system. You can put things next to it, lash it down, and put things on top, which is really nice to have. Looking at the face of the R1500, starting in this corner here, you have a cigarette outlet type DC plug that has a nice cover on it to keep it out of the elements. A nice big display here. This is your main power button. DC USB outlet here. DC USB-C outlet here with its own on off switch. And you have four AC outlets here that have a really nice captured rubber, rubber plug. And as you can see down here, it's got a capture. So these will not come off easily, which is really nice again for weather protection. Looking at the left side here, another flat face. You've got a really nice big grab handle. They go really deep. They go into the, the chunks of my fingers here. That will give you a nice grip. It also has a grippy surface on the inside. Once again, very well thought out. This is a door that leads to your charging. This is for uh, AC charging and this is your solar input and then obviously your AC reset. And this door again, very well thought out. You just press and lift, closes just the same, very easy to use. The back again, a big flat surface. And on this side you have again a flat surface with a nice big grippy handle. Again, another door which leads to your expansion joints, which I do not have the expansion battery pack, so I cannot use these but it is there for those that do. To turn on the all powers, just hit this center button here, press and hold for three seconds and it will just turn on. 
It is currently at 100%, I charged it two days ago, and there is zero loss of power in the off mode. I wish all powers would add an off screen, so when you press and hold, it does say off, and not just that audible beep turning off, just so that you know it is in the off position. I do turn it off, hear the beep, and then press it once to make sure it does not turn on again, and that it is actually off. I don't want it to run and just lose power because it is in a standby mode. The All Powers R1500 also has an app which is really easy to use. You can see here at the top, I'm at 100%. My running time at this usage, which is none, is 337 hours or 14 days in one hour, which is great to know that I can run this for a really long time using no power whatsoever. Uh, basic functions like turning on and off AC and DC outlets, which is great. That way you don't have things running that you don't want running. In the setup mode, you have a little bit more tuning you can do as far as work mode, eco mode, settings such as that. Really rudimentary, easy to use, and easy to see what is going on with your All Powers R1500. Another cool feature on the top of the unit here is actually wireless charging. You can put your phone or a wireless charging device on top. There's two pads with the 15 watt output. Really cool that we can just throw your phone on there. You can store it on there and it will charge at the same time. Just another cool little feature that All Powers added. I also got the All Powers SP033 Mono Crystalline Foldable Waterproof Solar Panel, which is 200 watts. Now, when I was during my testing doing the Boog RV, I think I got about between 130 and 140 watts out of it, um, which I guess is just kind of standard what you get out of a panel like this. So that was not surprising. Uh, what I do like is the fact that it folds up really nice and tight. The uh, measurements in real life are just over 25 inches and length and 19 and a half inches wide and it's only like when they're all folded up less than an inch which is really nice compact package for being a 200 watt panel the only thing that i wish is that the cable itself is just a pinch over six feet and i really think that they should provide cables that are more in the range of 15 to 20 feet that way you can displace this panel further away from your camp setup. That way you're not having to camp in the sun just so you can charge your bank or have to carry your battery bank away from your vehicle to plug it in out in the sun when you're in the shade. So one of those things, I'm sure you can get a connector for it, but it'd be nice if they provided it. The next part of this system is from Stoke Voltaics. This is the Nomad Cook System and this is the Jewel, which is basically an electric jet boil. Really good system. All I've really done is I made chili one day and then I've been basically just heating food up in it on my the one testing and one trip I did and it works really good. Just from the get-go, the only thing that I wish was different with this system is the power. I wish it was DC, not AC. I understand why it's AC. They need the large power to get things up to high temperatures and you're cooking in big bulk. So I understand why you need AC. I just wish it was DC. Maybe one day they'll be able to figure out a way to make that happen. This is the Stoke Voltaic Nomad Cook System. What you get is one electric burner with a turn dial so you can adjust your setting. Comes with one pan, which is serrated so you could cook steak on it if you choose. And then you have a pot and a lid and the lid fits both the pan and the pot. You also have a nifty little uh, gripper here that grips both the pan and the pot. And then you have one AC electric outlet to run the burner. Another thing that's really cool about this system, it kind of nestles in itself. You can put this here, this here, and get in the power cable flat is the hardest part. And then you can kind of press that down and it's a much smaller package to store in your rig. The little jewel is really cool. Great for just making coffee in the morning, which is pretty much all I've used it for that and made oatmeal one time. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, it does come with a little coffee strainer for a pour over coffee, which I have not used. It has a cap on it with the spill. Uh, there's three settings, drink, eat, and pop. So I guess you can make popcorn on it, even though I will never do that. But it has a um, neoprene cover, so you, we can hold on to it and actually drink out of it like you would a jet boil. And it just really is good and functional. I like the form factor of it a lot. Let's do some testing with the Nomad Pot. We'll boil some water, see how long it takes. First off, you plug in the AC power cable. I'm gonna plug this into the All Powers R1500. 
Gonna power that up, put the pot on, we'll throw some water in here, and then let's turn it on. I got it turned on. The Nomad pot is pulling a thousand watts. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. It is already showing bubbles, so it's obviously very, very hot. The All Powers is showing that it's pulling 975 watts, so very close to what this is saying. And then we're only at a minute and 40 seconds, and like I said, we've already got bubbles popping up, so this thing cooks really, really fast. Five and a half minutes. I forgot to stop the clock. We're at 556 right now, but five and a half minutes to boil water and pulling just shy of a thousand watts uh, to get this thing to actually get water to a rumbling boil, which is pretty impressive. I mean, you got to realize that if you were to have a cook system like a Camp Chef, you're right around the same time to boil water. It might be a little bit faster because you can really crank that temp up, but it's not quite as clean and easy and not to mention if you have a camper you can cook inside with this there's not going to be any kind of fumes associated with this cook system might be a little hard to see on the display here but all you have to do is press it to turn it on from pause we're at 200 watts then you can roll the toggle and the digital display will read 400 watts 600 watts 800 and a thousand watts which is the max it gives you a timer to tell you how long you've been running it for and then if you want to stop it for whatever reason press it and then it will pause your cook, which gives it no power. Another great reason for this system is it works like an induction cook system. You put on the cook handle, which is removable, you lock it on, and then you can pull this up and we'll actually turn this thing completely off. And there is no heat associated with the burner whatsoever. You put it back on and it reinitiates the cook. And then you can just turn your temperature up and begin cooking or continue cooking. And that demonstration took the battery from 100% down to 87%. Now let's see if we can use the Juul and the cook pot to boil water at the same time. The Juul works in the same manner. All you do is press, you set it to your setting. It's either on or off. Then you have drink, eat, or pop. So we're gonna put it on drink. We'll put this down, put the lid on. Now we'll turn on the cook pot and see if we can get that to run at full 1000 watts. Yeah, it's pulling it. So. The cook pot is at 1000 watts, and I think this pulls about five or 600 watts. The All Powers is saying it is pulling 1,453 watts, which is really impressive. It's able to kind of run both. Let's see if we can actually get it to boil. All right, the boat's starting to bubble. We've got boiling water in the pan, which I figured would happen because the water was already hot. Now the jewel is starting to bubble also. And during that testing, the battery went down to 75%. The geyser was one of the things the anchor did not want to run. So I'm going to test out the all powers and see if it will run the geyser heating and pumping. The heating element is on. So it's actively heating. I'm not going to wait for this to get up to temperature. Let's just test out the pump. Works just fine. I've got the clock going and now is a great time to tell you about the Ice Co chair giveaway. I've got two chairs to give away to one of you awesome Adventure Belt subscribers. Now what you have to do is be a subscriber to the Ice Co channel, go to their page and like any of their videos. Then come back to this video, comment done in the video and then I will draw one of you lucky, or I'm sorry, two of you lucky winners. Currently we are drawing 134 watts from the panel. We're at 85% and I'm stopping the time at one hour and 26 minutes. You can extrapolate out for the sake of brevity to basically say that it would take three hours and 45 minutes, four hours-ish to get up to 100% today. Although it's a very bad day for solar, I've seen as low as 31 watts and as high as 137. So I'm definitely not getting a lot of wattage out of today's cloudy weather. Uh, however, this is a huge uh, renewable resource. I mean, as long as you have the time and you have sun, you can get this battery bank up to 100% and keep on rocking with all of your adventures. This is where my new All Powers is going to live. The new R1500 is going to sit right here in my Next Jump Outfitters side box. Next to that is going to be the Stoke Voltaics Nomadic and Jewel. It's going to sit right here in this tiny little bin because everything folds down so nice and tight. I have to say, I am really impressed with this R1500. It has met every challenge I've thrown at it and it has done very well. Um, it's very robust. It sat in the back of the new Tacoma on a trip up a mountain. It got really dusty and it doesn't seem to affect the performance at all. Uh, the solar input is really nice, that 200 watt panel. 
I wish it would put out a little bit more wattage, but I have yet to test it on a really good, clear solar day. The Stoke Voltaics uh, Nomad system and the little Jewel is really cool. I like the way that you can just have this cook system, not relying on propane, very clean, very easy to use, and it really works fast, like it boiled water fast. Uh, the chili that I made was good. I mean, it's just really, really easy to use with the digital readout for the display. No guessing games about what the setting's at. You can simmer, you can cook, you can boil. It's just very simple and straightforward. And I like the way it's very safe. You don't have to worry about any kind of exhaust fumes from the propane. It's just easy and I like easy and it's renewable, which is even better. All right, guys, tell me what you think of this system. Is this something that you would use? I'm really curious. Also, be sure to get into that Ice Coat Chair giveaway. All you have to do is go to their YouTube channel, subscribe to their channel, like a video, and then come back to this video and, and uh, reply done into the comments. I will pull a winner here. I don't know when, but very soon. And I will put that on, out on Instagram as well about who the winner is. Um, so be sure to just keep an eye on that. All right, guys, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.